jobs every company will be hiring for by 2025. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. But before we get into that, make sure to gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. On this channel, we talk about personal finance, college degrees, careers, and opportunities that will lead you to success. And we also talk about avoiding some of the common financial traps that so many people fall for. If you're new here and that sounds like something that interests you and you haven't done it already, go ahead, smash the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you never miss an opportunity. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. Number 10 on the list is going to be a project management specialist. So this is one of those careers that I like to talk about where you're almost like a mini entrepreneur within a business. It's almost like entrepreneurship with training wheels. So you would basically take over an entire project that a business would do. Usually it's gonna be a bigger business and you would be the leader of that project. You'd carry out the plans that the CEO or the executives of the business set for you and see it out until the very end. Now there's about 80,000 new positions that are expected to pop up over the next 10 years and they make around $73,000 a year right now. Now you can be in just about any industry out there and be a project manager. You could be in the construction industry, software development industry, etc. And sometimes there isn't even any supervision depending on the company that you work for. Sometimes you're the top person that everybody else reports to and you are in charge of pretty much every aspect of a new product. So let's say that Elon Musk decides that he wants to create an electric mini helicopter that anyone can have and just ride around on in their backyard. He might put you, the product manager, in charge of that particular product. You would be in charge of the entire life cycle of the product all the way from idea to conception to bringing it to market. You would make a minimum viable product and then you'd make refinements to make it a little bit better and make sure that it can be mass produced for the market. This is going to require a a lot of leadership and management skill you're going to have to communicate with all kinds of different departments within the company and you can see why this is such a coveted skill next one on the list number nine is going to be computer and information systems managers this one is projected to have about 48,000 positions open up in the next 10 years and you're going to make around $146,000 a year now this one is somewhat similar to project management but it's more tailored towards the technology side of things and in particular information systems another way to say this is that it's mostly management but it's tailored towards being management in the field of information systems. You'll be doing a lot of the same things, scheduling, resource allocation, making sure that you meet timelines, and of course, management. Now, I've talked about this a lot before on the channel. It's a really great combination of technology and leadership and business skills. So technology is something that I would consider a huge opportunity right now. There's just so much opportunity when it comes to tech, whether that be coding or information systems. It's just, it's a huge opportunity right now at this particular time in history. And and then management and leadership skills, that's just like an evergreen skill. It doesn't matter what time in history that you were born into, that is a skill that's gonna be very valuable. So you combine these two things together, very few people have the technical knowledge as well as the skill set. It's a great combo. Next one on the list, number eight is going to be management analysts. So management analysts have a very interesting job. It's more of a retroactive job, meaning that you're gonna be looking back in the history of a company. Some of the other careers that I just mentioned are more forward thinking. You're you know, creating new products and you're making sure that they get to market on time. This one is more of a backwards thinking type career where you're looking back at the history of the company, looking at their numbers, et cetera, and seeing how you can improve things. There's projected to be about 93 thousand new positions in the next 10 years and they're making around $85,000 a year. Now sometimes management analysts will work for a particular company full-time then they basically just go around to different departments and figure out how to streamline and optimize things. A lot of the time they'll also work as a consultant for a consulting company and they'll specialize in a very specific field. So let's say that a company is having an issue tracking their sales and marketing numbers on a digital product that's sold online. They want to figure out which one of their ads are most effective, which ones of their ads are not working all that well. Sometimes this might only result in a 10 or even 5% increase in profit, but when you're talking about something that's at a really high level, it's at scale, that can be millions of dollars potentially. Management analysts would basically go through and just tweak things here and there just to make tiny little improvements. Or maybe a manufacturer of a car company needs help reorganizing their supply chain so that they can make more cars in a day. Maybe a factory is creating, let's say, 100 cars in a day, the management analyst might be able to come in there and if they're able to help the factory create 105 or maybe 110 a day, that actually helps out the company a lot. So usually as a management analyst, you would be a specialist in a very specific field and you would just help a lot of different companies with the same problem 
as a consultant. Number seven on the list is going to be market research analysts and marketing specialists. So market research analysts, this is another career that's a little bit more backwards looking. You're not necessarily going to be doing the actual marketing itself. You're not gonna be creating the marketing or anything like that. What you will be doing is you'll be gathering data on a particular market. You'll be looking at the consumers as well as the competitors within that market. So very simply speaking, you're gonna be figuring out what products people want, who will buy them and at what price point you should put them at. Now with this position, you're gonna be making around $63,000 a year. And in the next 10 years, there's gonna be 130,000 jobs that become available. So a significant amount of your job as a market research analyst is gonna be conducting different surveys and polls with customers or potential customers. You're gonna be figuring out the best way to set up these surveys and polls so that you get accurate data. You'll also be asking a lot of questions. So in order to get really good answers, you have to ask really good questions. It's very easy to be misled if you set up a really bad poll or you ask a really bad question. And so there's a real art and science to asking questions and creating surveys and polls. Now, on top of that, you would be running focus groups. And this is where you would actually meet with people in person and you would ask them questions and you would see what people say in person because a lot of the time people will be more forthcoming if you ask them questions in person and it's just the more real and you're actually talking to a real human being. Number six on the list is going to be a nurse practitioner. This is one of my favorite careers. I've talked about this one a lot, especially if you're interested in healthcare, this is one of the better ones that you can go for. Now, depending on the laws and where you're at, you can do quite a bit as a nurse practitioner. Generally speaking, you can treat, prescribe, and diagnose certain conditions. And a lot of the time you won't have to be under direct supervision vision of a doctor. So you don't need the doctor's permission in order to prescribe or diagnose. One of these careers where you can get into the career, start actually making money in a reasonable amount of time, usually about six years or so. You don't have to do eight years of schooling and then a seven year residency and then a two year fellowship like sometimes doctors have to do. So this is a position that can be very attractive to someone who's interested in being in health, but you don't want to spend all of your 20s and half of your 30s working like 80 to 100 hours a week and be, you know, $300,000 in debt. Now, this one is growing insanely fast, like unbelievably fast. In the next 10 years, there's going to be 110,000 positions that open up and nurse practitioners make really good money. They make around $109,000 a year and that keeps going up. So I made a video about all of the downsides of being a medical doctor and there are quite a bit of them. I still think it's a good career overall, but I think a lot of people get into it not knowing exactly what they're getting themselves into. I think this is a great alternative for people who are interested in being a doctor, but they don't wanna spend all that time. Has a lot of the upsides of being a doctor with few of the downsides. You get to have a very meaningful career like a medical doctor would have, but you also get to have work-life balance, which is nice as well. Number five on the list is going to be a medical and health services manager. So this is someone who would be like an executive or an administrator at a hospital or a clinic, and it can range in management from managing an entire group of physicians down to just managing a very small part of a hospital. Now, a lot of the time, these positions will be filled by people who already work in healthcare and they kind of just want to move up into more of a managerial position. So a lot of these positions are going to be filled by nurses, doctors, pharmacists, etc. But in the next 10 years, there's 133,000 jobs that are going to be opening and they make around $100,000 a year. There is a lot that goes into the business side of healthcare, making sure that a hospital or a clinic runs smoothly smoothly. And like I said, traditionally, these positions are taken up by people who have actual healthcare experience, which trust me, that's a good thing. So it's a good idea to get some healthcare experience as a nurse or something like that if you want to get into a position like this. Number four on the list is going to be a financial manager. So financial managers are going to be a forward looking career where you're going to be thinking about the future of a company. So you're going to be thinking, how are you going to accomplish the company's goals while making sure that you maintain cash flow, profitability, and keep your stakeholders happy. So for instance, you've probably heard about companies that go deep in debt when they're trying to capture a portion of the market because they know that maybe 10 or 20 years down the line, they're going to be able to make billions of dollars if they're the one that wins. For a very long time, for instance, Amazon was actually negative every single year they were running at a deficit. But in the end, it paid off because of the fact that they captured so much of the market that it didn't matter. They probably had excellent financial management in order to run at a deficit and still keep the company going smoothly. You also see a lot of other companies out there, especially startups, tech startups that are doing this as well 
well, although some of them don't do such a good job. So there's gonna be about 108,000 positions that pop up in the next 10 years, and you're gonna make on average about $129,000 a year. Now, sometimes these positions will literally be working in the finance industry where they are financial managers and they're managing investments. So in this case, you would be helping to run a hedge fund or something along those lines, and maybe you would be put in charge of a particular market. So maybe you would be managing the technology side of the investing part of the hedge fund. This is a notoriously difficult job with very long working hours, but it can be kind of a high risk, high reward type of career. In my video, the careers that create the most millionaires, finance managers were one of the top positions. And when you looked into the data even a little bit further, you found that people who work in the finance industry make up a lot of the top 99.5th percentile and 99.9th percentile. So again, it's a high risk, high reward type of career. The finance industry in general has a lot of opportunity. That's why people spend so many ads on YouTube. Number three on the list is going to be a general and operations manager. So the general and operations manager is kind of responsible for making sure that the day-to-day -day tasks within an organization are carried out. They're not really forward looking or backward looking. They're more just in the moment, making sure that everything is running smoothly. You'll be overseeing the budget and you'll also be directing the use of resources within the company. Over the next 10 years, there's gonna be 143,000 positions that open up and they're gonna make over $100,000 a year. So comparing this position to like a project management position, for instance, a project manager would be working on a particular project that has an end date and it has particular goals that are set. Operations manager is more about doing ongoing tasks, things that you'll be doing into the foreseeable future on a day-to-day -day basis. So for instance, if you worked in the technology industry, one of the operations that you would be responsible for would be making sure that the web servers stay up. So an operations manager might identify a need to upgrade the web server and they would assign a project manager to take care of that. They would tell them exactly when it needs to be done, how long they have, how much cash they have in order to do it and give them all the details. And then they'd be like, okay, good luck. So someone who really enjoys doing kind of repetitive day-to-day -day tasks and just making sure things stay on track might enjoy this type of job. It might not be a very sexy job like a lot of the other ones that I mentioned, but it's something that companies really need. Number two on the list is going to be one of my favorite careers in healthcare as well, which is going to be registered nurses. So this is going to be a nurse that basically has like a four-year degree. Sometimes you can get it in less than that, but usually they are a registered nurse that has like a four-year degree. I think everybody knows what nurses do. They're basically the backbone of healthcare. They might be the most important healthcare position. They do all the work and they also also get blamed for everything within hospitals. If you work in a hospital, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now in the next 10 years, an astonishing 221,000 positions are gonna be opened up. And on top of that, nurses make around $73,000 a year right now. Now I can tell you that you can make a lot more than that as a nurse. The 73,000 is probably because of the fact that many of them work part-time. I know many different nurses that get into the six figures relatively easily. It really depends on your specialty and how much you wanna work because there's pretty much always going to be you know, openings for you to come in and work extra hours and get paid overtime. That's one of the things about working in healthcare in general is pretty much everywhere is always understaffed. It's uh, kind of bad. It's kind of a horrible thing, to be honest. But at the same time, it can be a good thing just because there's so much demand, there's a lot of job security, and if you wanna work extra hours, you can do that. So doctors prescribe, pharmacists dispense, and nurses administer. That's basically how it goes within a hospital. One great thing about working as a nurse is let's say you don't enjoy whatever specialty you go into it's very easy for you to actually switch specialties. So let's say you're working as a geriatric nurse, you know, you're taking care of elderly people and you kind of get tired of that. You, you know, it's not something that you're enjoying doing. It gets a little bit repetitive. Maybe you're somebody who really likes kind of an adrenaline rush. So you could go and work in the ICU. Pretty much whatever personality you have, there's going to be a nursing job that's going to fit that personality. You kind of just have to try different things out. Number one on the list is going to be software developers. No surprise whatsoever here. I've told you guys over and over again, this is probably the biggest opportunity out of any type of career out there. So a software developer very simply is gonna be somebody who writes code for software. Over the next 10 years, there's going to be an insane 316,000 positions that are opening up. And on top of that, software developers already make really good money, about $107,000 a year. Now, most software developers do have a bachelor's degree. The one that would make the most sense to get would be computer science. But because of the fact that there's so much demand, you can 
can actually get into software development with either a different degree that's unrelated, sometimes like a math degree or a physics degree, or sometimes you can even get into it without getting a degree at all, just taking a boot camp and just showing people that you know what you're doing. Now this is an opportunity that might not last that long in my opinion. I think as the market matures, there's gonna be more and more companies that want people that have bachelor's degrees. That's just my opinion. But if you wanna take your chances and try to get into software development by taking a boot camp or something along those lines, there are people that have been successful with that. If you're an autodidact, somebody who can teach yourself coding, or if you're just really smart, or maybe you're a child prodigy who already knows coding, you've been doing it since you were 14, that might be a better option for you. If you haven't done it already, make sure to gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm, smash the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you never miss an opportunity. And also comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc., that you have on the video. And whatever you do, make sure to not click out of this video. Check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.